Hello, and welcome to the Tartan Topiary. I'm Mary, and on this channel, I always feature a book on the topic of interior design or gardening, and I'll share how this book has inspired me or just general musings of life. I hope you will take a moment and relax while we look at Classical Shindig, Amateur Artistry from the Simple to the Sublime, written by Michael Harold and Quinn Peeper, forward by Henrietta Spencer Churchill and Flora Frazier, with the introduction by Deb Shriver. While in London, I found myself enamored by the beautiful offerings at Nina Campbell's shop. But as an American from the South, my heart filled with pride as this delightful book came into view. It is written by two gentlemen from New Orleans, Michael Harold and Quinn Peeper. Michael is a lawyer and the owner of a legal search firm. He studied Spanish at the University of the South and received his Juris Doctorate from LSU. He began taking piano lessons in first grade and continues to study and perform classical music today. He has also contributed articles for local and national magazines. Quinn Peeper was born in Osceola, Arkansas. He is a practicing OBGYN in New Orleans with degrees from Washington and Lee University, University College Oxford, and Columbia University, College of Physicians and Surgeons. He also has received an MBA from Auburn University, and he is a classical pianist. This large volume is filled with photographs, illustrations, and recipes, as well as insightful and humorous anecdotes that are certain to inspire you and put you in the mood to celebrate and entertain. The word shindig, as defined by Webster's Dictionary, is a large, lively party or specific celebration. And according to Michael and Quinn, any season and any reason is a perfect time for a shindig. The reader is invited to enjoy Michael and Quinn's authentic sense of style and design in their well-appointed home and lush garden while exploring the joys of throwing unique and personal events. The reader will also come away with hosting, interior design, and entertaining tips and tricks that even an amateur can execute. Michael and Quinn have seen, done, and decorated it all, from every seasonal celebration to book clubs, lavish parties for loved ones, and charities that many have attended, including Her Royal Highness, the Princess Royal. Classical Shindig is complete with 30 delectable recipes, a substantial resource guide, QR codes for access to videos of their concertos, and delightful stories from Mississippi County, Arkansas to the oak-lined streets of New Orleans. Michael Harold writes in the book, 
Coming up with a title wasn't easy since we both grew up in disparate regions of the southern U.S. with diverse cuisine, accents, and religion. The goal was to embrace the uniqueness and at the same time convey what we had in common, namely a love of piano music, food, and style. The problem is that we are hardly professional musicians, chefs, or designers. We are mere amateurs. And therein lies the message for us all. I enjoyed this book immensely. It's a stunning and large volume filled with beautiful photographs, illustrations, and clever and informative text. One shindig I particularly appreciated was an ode to William Faulkner, so aptly referred to as the Wild Palms. They offered guests Faulkner postage stamps and note cards embellished with quotes by this Southern writer. I immediately thought of a William Faulkner quote that seemed fitting to end this review. Always dream and shoot higher than you know you can do. Do not bother just to be better than your contemporaries or predecessors. Try to be better than yourself. I think this is what Michael Harold and Quinn Peeper have successfully achieved. This is much more than a coffee table book. It's an insight into the happiness of life. Classical Shindig, Amateur Artistry, From the Simple to the Sublime, written by Michael Harold and Quinn Peeper. Forward, written by Henrietta Spencer Churchill and Flora Frazier. This book is 384 pages. It is published by Susan Shad Press, and it retails for $60. This past weekend was Wilmington's Azalea Festival. Now the azaleas have faded and are in need of a good pruning. I'm also making a quick assessment of some of my plants that didn't make it over the winter and need to be replaced, along with any annuals that I will be planting. We can revisit this next week. But right now, we'll go back to London and finish shopping at Harrods. Harrods is one of the most famous department stores in the world. It occupies a five-acre site in the Knightsbridge area of London. It has 330 departments and covers one 0.1 million square feet of retail space. Harrods was founded by Charles Henry Harrod, who initially opened it as a grocery shop in 1831. He soon expanded this business and referred to himself as a draper, mercer, and haberdasher. By 1881, 
it employed 100 people and became a booming and thriving retail operation and gained notoriety for its excellent customer service. In early December of 1883, the store suffered a fire and it burned to the ground. Remarkably, Charles Herod fulfilled all of his commitments that Christmas and managed to make every delivery and in the process, making a record profit. Without delay, a new building was constructed on the same site, and soon, Harrods was extending credit for the first time to its best customers. Among them were Oscar Wilde, Charlie Chaplin, Laurence Olivier, Vivian Lee, Sigmund Freud, and A. A. Milne. Beatrix Potter began shopping at Harrods at the age of 17, and when she first published her children's book in 1902, The Tale of Peter Rabbit was sold at Harrods, accompanied by the world's first licensed character, which was a Peter Rabbit stuffed animal. In 1921, A.A. A. Milne bought an 18-inch teddy bear from Harrods for his son, Christopher Robin, who named this bear Winnie. It was this very teddy bear that became the basis for Winnie the Pooh. The Egyptian-themed escalator is a true spectacle and was installed in 1998. As you ascend or descend, you find yourself surrounded by intricate details inspired by ancient Egypt. They include sphinxes, hieroglyphics, and other mystical elements. These escalators are clad in a sheath of nickel bronze. Herod's role in introducing escalators into department stores remains a fascinating part of its legacy. On November 16, 1898, Herod's made history by opening the first escalator in England, known as the Moving Staircase. It was crafted from woven leather and functioned as an inclined conveyor belt. This moving staircase was described as both exhilarating and fascinating. In order to entice members of high society to use the moving staircase, Herod's offered cognac to the customer when they reached the top. This, of course, was just to ease any frazzled nerves. Thanks for walking through Herod's with me, and I hope you will join me next week as we look at Nina Campbell, Interior Decoration, Elegance, and Ease. <music>